Hi, welcome to Lumi. In this video, we will introduce another important application of derivative, the monoticity and the concavity. Monoticity means increasing or decreasing of a function. Let f be a function defined on the interval i. f is increasing on i when, for all x1 and 2s belonging to the interval i, x1 is lesser than x2 and f of x1 lesser than f of x2. f would be considered non-decreasing on i when x1 is lesser than x2 and f of x1 is lesser or equal to f of x2. f is considered decreasing on that interval i when x1 is lesser than x2 and f of x1 is bigger than f of x2. And f is considered not increasing on the interval i when x1 is lesser than x2 and f of x1 is bigger or equal to f of x2. In some books, including our book, we use increasing and non decreasing. However, in other books, they strictly use increasing and increasing. Recall that a derivative at a point is equal to the slope of this point. So if the derivative at a point is greater, than zero, then the slope at this point is greater than zero. If the derivative is greater than zero on that interval, it means that the slope of every point on that interval is greater than zero. Then we can say that the function is increasing on this interval. Similarly, if the derivative is less than zero on that interval, it means that the slope at every point on that interval is less than zero then we can say that the function is decreasing on that interval. If you pay attention to the graph, as you may see on the first graph, x1 is lesser than x2, and f of x1 is lesser than f of x2, meaning that this function is increasing. But in the next example, x1 is lesser than x2, f of x1 is bigger than f of x2, meaning that this function is decreasing. Well, that was just an intuitive explanation. Now we introduce the theory of monoticity, which allows us to use the first derivative to find the interval where a function is increasing or decreasing. Let a be lesser than b. Let f be a function defined at the interval a to b. If for all x's belonging to a to b, the derivative of f of x is bigger than zero, then the function f is increasing on that interval a to b. If for all x's that belong to a to b, f prime of x is bigger or equal to zero, then the function f is non-decreasing on the interval a to b. If for all x's belonging to a to b, the derivative of the function f of x is lesser than zero, then the function f is decreasing on the interval a to b. In that same concept, if for all x's belonging to a to b, the derivative of the function f is lesser or equal to zero, then the function f is non-increasing on the interval a to b. This theorem can help us analyze the monoticity of a function. For example, find where the function f of x is increasing and where it is decreasing. So we take the derivative of the function f of x and we end up with f prime of x to be equal to 12x times x minus two, times x plus 1. Then we create a plus minus chart to find out in which intervals the function is increasing and when it is decreasing. We find out that on the interval x being lesser than negative 1, f prime of x is lesser than 0, meaning that this function is decreasing on the interval negative infinity to negative 1. On the interval between negative 1 to 0, f prime of x is bigger than 0, so we see that the function f of x is increasing on the interval negative 1 to 0. Then on the interval 0 to 2, f prime of x is lesser than 0, so that the function f of x is decreasing on the interval 0 to 2. And the interval x bigger than 2, f prime of x is bigger than 0, meaning that f of x is increasing on the interval 2 to positive infinity. Here is the graph of the function, and we can see that the monoticity of this function is the same as we got in the solution set. As you may see, the function is decreasing between negative infinity to negative 1, increasing between negative 1 to 0, 
and it's decreasing between 0 to positive 2 and is increasing again from 2 to positive infinity. The discussion of monoticity can help us determine whether a function has a local maximum or a minimum or a set of point at a critical point. We call it the first derivative test. Suppose that c is a critical number on a continuous function f. If f prime of x is bigger than 0 on x lesser than c, and f prime of x is lesser than 0 on x is bigger than c, then f has a local maximum at the point c. As you may see, the derivative of the function f of x is bigger than 0, here is lesser than 0, right at the maximum point f prime of x equal to 0 has a local maximum. And if f prime of x is lesser than 0 on x lesser than c, and f prime of x is bigger than 0 on x bigger than c, then f has a local minimum at the point c. So as you see on the graph, f prime of c here is lesser than 0, f prime of c here is bigger than 0, and at the point f prime of x equal to 0, we have a local minimum. If f prime does not change signs, for example, if f prime is positive on both sides of c or negative on both sides, then there is no local maximum or minimum at c. So you can say that it has a saddle point. So for example, there's no maximum or minimum in the first example that we have. You see that the f prime of x is bigger than 0 and f prime of x is bigger than 0 on both sides of c in this example, meaning that c in this case is a saddle point. And in the second example, f prime of x is less than 0 and f prime of x is less than 0 on both left and right side of c, meaning that c here is a saddle point. For example, if you want to find all the local maximum and minimum values of the function g of x, where x is between 0 to 2 pi, before this video, what you will need to do is you can approach this problem by using the local extreme value theorem. However, this theorem only helps you find where the maximum, minimum, or saddle point is. And you can find the absolute extreme by comparing the function values of those to the critical points. However, you can't determine which critical point is a local maximum and which critical point is a local minimum. Now, with the first derivative test, you can definitely do that. First, we need to differentiate the function and find the g prime of x to be equal to 1 plus 2 cos of x. Then we analyze g by using the following table and find out that it's increasing in the interval 0 to 2 pi over 3, decreasing on the interval 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3, and it's increasing on the interval 4 pi over 3 to 2 pi. Since the derivative is greater than 0 on the 0 to 2 pi over 3 and less than 0 on 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3, then the local maximum value is g of 2 pi over 3, which you get a solution of 3.38. Since the derivative is lesser than 0 on the 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3 and greater than 0 on 4 pi over 3 and 2 pi, then the local minimum value is g of 4 pi over 3, which is, in this case, 2.46. And here we have a graph that describes this notation. As you may see, there is a local maximum at 2 pi over 3, and there is a local minimum at 4 pi over 3. Next, we will introduce the concept of concavity. There are two types of concavities, concave up and concave down. In some books, there may be the use of convex or concave. It is really easy to mess up using convex and concave, so in our video, we will just use the vocabulary concave up and concave down. Here's the definition of the latter. If the graph of a function f lies above its tangent on the interval i, then we say that the function f is concave up on i. If the graph of the function f lies below 
its tangent line on the interval i, then we say that the function f is concave down on the interval i. To put it in the most simplest way possible, here from the graph that you see, concave down means that the graph is open downwards, and concave up means that the graph is open upwards. With these definitions in mind, we can define the inflection point. A point P on a curve y equals to f of x is called an inflection point if f is continuous there and the curve changes from concave upwards to concave downwards or from concave downwards to concave upwards. So now let us consider the function f of x as we have the graph in front of us. As you see on the graph, point B, point C, point D, and point P are all inflection points since we are changing concavity from concave down to concave up to concave down to concave up and at E to P you change from concave up and to concave down. However, point E is not a point of inflection. Why? Because you're changing from concave up to concave up again, meaning that it does not fall into the definition that we just talked about. Concavity is strongly related to the second derivative. If a function f is defined and is twice differentiable on an open interval i, then we can say if the second derivative of the function f is bigger than zero for all x's, then the graph of f is concave upwards on the interval i. And if the second derivative of the function f is lesser than zero, for all x's in the interval i, then the graph is concave downwards on the interval i. Also, we have the second derivative test to check if a critical point is a local max or a local minimum or a saddle point. Suppose the second derivative of f is continuous near the point c. If f prime of c is equal to zero and f double prime of c is bigger than zero, then f has a local minimum at the point c. If f prime of c is equal to zero and f double prime of c is lesser than zero, then f has a local maximum at point c. And if f prime of c is equal to zero and f double prime of c is equal to zero, then f has a saddle point at point c. Here is an example. Let us discuss the curve y equals to x to the power of four minus four x cubed. With respect to concavity, points of inflection, and local maxima and minima. In order to use the second derivative test to discuss these, we need to find the second derivative from the first derivative of this function. So I take the first derivative of this function to be equal to 4x squared times x minus 3, and the second derivative is 12x times x minus 2. From the first derivative, the critical points of this function is 0 and 3, and we can say that the second derivative of 0 is equal to 0, and the second derivative of 3 is going to be bigger than 0, so that the function has a saddle point at 0 and a local minimum at 3. And f double prime of 0 and f double prime of 2 is also equal to 0, so there is a point of inflection at x equals to 0 and x equals to 2. Here in this table of the second derivative of this function, we can see that the function in the interval negative infinity to 0 is concave up. The function on the interval 0 to 2 is concave down. And the function on the interval 2 to infinity is concave upwards. Here's the graph of this function to help you guys better visualize our results. So as you may see, there are two points of inflection at 0, 0, and 2 at negative 16. And you can also see that there's a going to be a local minimum or an absolute minimum at 3 and negative 27 and a saddle point on 0 and 0. And you can discuss the concavity, which you see from negative infinity to 0 is concave up, from 0 to 3 is concave down, and from 3 to positive infinity is concave upwards. In summary of today's video, we first described what an increasing and decreasing function means and what it looks like. Then we discussed first derivative test to find out 
the local maximum or local minimum. Then we discuss the behavior of concavity, whether it be concave up or concave down. Then we talked about the second derivative test to help us determine whether a critical point is a local maximum or a minimum or a saddle point. That is all for our video today. Thank you guys for watching.